Hey guys, welcome to the Winter Exam School. I'm Atik Muhammad, and I'm freezing. <laughs> That's why I have Tracy in studio with me today, who's going to warm me and you with some great 12 physical sciences. Now, from what I understand, that most of you are going to be writing your paper one this week. So, guys, make sure that you're using the platform and you're interacting with me on our Facebook page or our email listed below. For now, let's go through to T Tracy and see what she has in store yeah. for us. Atik's cold because the aircon's on and he doesn't have a jersey. So <laughs> Durban boy, what does he know? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's all right, we're fine. You see, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm organized. I know better. Joburg's cold. It has been. The cold front from the Cape's come up. But today, we're actually doing a bit of everything. So we're going to do some physics for a little bit, and then we're going to dump into some chemistry. It's going to feel a little bit like physics, because there's lots of calculations. Sure. Hallelujah. But that's okay. So should we just jump in there? Let's, Let's get do into it. it. Okay, so. Let's start with some electrostatics. Don't forget that is in your papers from grade 11. Tells you a small sphere Q1 with a charge of plus 32 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. The plus is important. Is suspended from a light string secured to a support. A second identical sphere. Now, all they mean by identical sphere, sphere here is that they're the same mass, same size, same um, made out of the same material, all of that sort of stuff. But now it has a minus 55 times 10 to the minus 9 Coulomb charge. It's placed in a narrow cylindrical tube. I'll show you the diagram in a second, vertically below. Each sphere has a mass of 7 grams. Both spheres come to equilibrium when Q2 is 2.5 centimeters from Q1. So now what we've got here, here's Q1. Okay, that's Q1. That's Q2, okay, and now they're in equilibrium two and a half centimeters away from each other. Now, what you need to recognize about this is this is going to be a combination of Coulomb's law, probably your electrostatics, as well as Newton's laws. Because remember, there's a force between these charges, and this is where you've got to remember the plus and the minus becomes important. So we need to keep in the back of our mind that we're probably going to need Newton's laws in a question that looks like this when it's vertical. Okay, so first question is calculate the number of electrons that were removed from Q1 to give it a charge of plus 32, assume that the sphere was neutral before being charged. Okay, so when we go here, now we want to know how many electrons were removed. So Q1 had a charge of plus 32 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Now here, this is actually grade 10 work that they expect you to remember. Remember that the charge on an electron is minus 1,6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, okay? I'm going to ignore the signs when I do this calculation because I want number of electrons. You can't have a negative number of electrons. It can only be a positive value, okay? But I want to know how many electrons were removed. Now, if my, if my sphere was originally neutral and now I've got plus 32 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs as my charge, that means my... I took away 32 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs of negative charge, okay? Now, the equation is this, okay? And it's an equation that's given on your information sheets, if I remember correctly. So, the number of electrons is the charge that we have divided by the charge on, it, on an electron. I can't remember if it's a capital Q or a low Q lowercase q at the top, but it doesn't matter. Charge is the one thing that it doesn't matter if you use a capital or a lowercase. Makes it very confusing with other things, but it's nice for this section. So, the charge that we're looking at is 32 times 10 to the minus 9. Charge on the electron, 1,6 times 10 to the minus 19. Now, guys, please don't look at that and go, oh, I can do that in my head. Because of the scientific notation, please rather use your calculators, okay, because... We don't want to lose marks on doing something silly. So 32 to the minus 9 divided by 1.6 to the minus 19 gives me 2 times 10 to the 11. Okay? Don't forget to say what you measured. So, in other words, to get a charge of 32 times 10 to the minus 9, I needed to remove... 2 times 10 to the 11 electrons, which is 200,000 million. Something like 
So uh -huh. like, it's a big number, okay? Let's do with 11 noughts behind it. I can't count that far. Okay, not so bad. So, oh, no, that was not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. So, next question. Draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on Q1. So now we go back to our diagram and we go, okay, Q1 is here. And we go, well, first of all, Q1 is going to be attracted to Q2 because Q2 is negative. So we know there's a force acting down. The string has to be acting up because otherwise it would only move down. But, and this is the one you mustn't forget, this object has weight. It's suspended. Just because it's small doesn't mean it doesn't have weight. So that means there's also gravity. So my free body diagram will end up looking like this. Here's Q1. Okay. We have my tension in my string. I'm going to have weight. I'm just going to call that W. And I'm also going to have, now watch here. Now this is why you need a label. I'm going to call it Fe. I'm not going to call it F. Now, it's a label diagram. So, tension. You could have also put Ft. That's tension. Okay. W. Some of you would have put it as Fg. That's fine. That's weight. Fe is the electrostatic force due to Q2, okay? There's lots of ways you could have written this. And sometimes on your, in your exams, you'll see they'll go force of Q2 on Q1. That's another way to, to do it, okay? It's up to you, but F is just easy because it's an electrostatic force, which is why you give me a label, okay? All right, so that's all nice and good. And why did they do that? Look at the last question. Calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. This is Newton's laws combined with electrostatics because when we go back to our force diagram, we go, fine, I want to work out T, okay. Weight's easy because weight is, F, is Fg, which is Mg. Not a problem. Ah, how do I get Fe? Well, I have two charges. Oppositely charged, that means I've got to use Coulomb's law, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is I know I need Coulomb's law, okay? So I'm going to go, well, Fe is K Q1 Q2 over R squared, okay? K is a constant. You don't need to remember it. It's given to you on your information sheet, and I wrote it down because I don't always remember it. 9 times 10 to the 9. Please leave out the signs. Don't put plus 32, minus 55, whatever the case may be. Please don't do that, okay? Because then you're going to get negative forces or positive force, and then you never know what to do with them. They just help you with knowing whether it's attraction or repulsion at the end, okay? Now, Q1 was the one we were looking at. That was 32 times 10 to the minus 9. Q2, which was here, is minus 55, now comes the fun question, okay, because I need the distance. Now, they said in the question that they come to an equilibrium two and a half centimeters apart. Two and a half centimeters is great, but we have to work in meters. So watch, we got 2.5 divided by 100, because there's 100 meters, meters in a centimeter, maybe not, 100 <laughs> centimeters in a meter. Okay, so that gives me... 0, 0, 0, 0.25. Big MB here now, okay? Please don't forget the square. It breaks my heart when I mark these questions because so often you put the equation down, you put your substitution, you, forgot, you forget to put that little square in when you write it down, and then you give me an answer, and I'm like, I want to cry because this square makes a huge difference to your answers. Please be careful. Okay, so let's do this because I certainly can't do this in my head. So 9 to the 9 times 32 to the minus 9 times 55 to the minus 9. So it gives me that. Okay, divided by 
0.025 squared. Okay, we don't like that number, okay, because it's small. And here, rounding off becomes an issue. So I'm going to change it into scientific notation, okay? So it's 2,53 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. Guys, please, you don't have to put it in scientific notation, but then remember when you round this off, it's going to be 0,025, not 0,003. Okay, make sure you round it off properly. So, I now have the electrostatic force, but, so I have electrostatic, no, what are you doing? You see, this board does not like me. Okay, great. Now I need W, okay, because W's got to be something I can work out, so we go fine. W means, I'm going to look for FG, FG is mass times gravity. Now they told me my mass was 7 grams. There's a thousand kilograms in a gram, so I'm just going to make the 7 times 10 to the minus 3, because that makes it easier. So 7 times 10 to the minus 3, I'm going to times that by 9,8. Certainly can't do that in my head. My math is good, but not that good, times 9.8. And we get 6,86 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. Okay. So now we go back to our diagrams, why they made you draw it, and we go, fine, I've got that. Okay, it reached equilibrium, which means it's stationary. That means that all the forces pulling up are equal to all the forces pulling down. So, tension is equal to Fe and W added together. So nice and easy. It's really not as bad as it looks. Okay, so my tension is equal to Fg plus my electrostatic force. So that's 6,86 times 10 to the minus 2 plus 2,53 times 10 to the minus 2. So let's do that one, 6.86 to the minus 2 plus 2. I know I've written something wrong here. It's 2,53. Let's just see. Yep, okay, let's put it back there. 2, comma, comma, 5, 3 to the minus 2. And we get 9, comma, 3, 9. And I can leave it like that. The question asked for the magnitude of Ft, not just Ft. If they if they had said calculate the tension in the string, then I would have had to go 9,39 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons up. But they asked for magnitude. As a quick aside here, okay, if you end up with a question where you do this and now you end up with a negative answer, but the question asked for magnitude, you have to then, so say I got this and we did something funny and I've done my whole question and I've ended up with this. Okay, so we've done the whole calculation Let's just put this separate. And you've ended up where you've got a line that goes it equal to minus 9,39. You can't just go equal to, not, you can't change it to, an, to, an, to a, just a randomly positive number in the same line. You have to write another line where you go, therefore, Ft magnitude is 9,39 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. Magnitude, you have to give us a positive answer regardless of what you get anywhere else but you don't have to give us direction but your final answer must be positive okay that's really 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 important now i finished a little bit early for this segment but that's okay because we got lots of fun questions that's fantastic yes. i see you've got uh, every time i, I see you I, <laughs> I have a fan that pops up on my facebook oh. so i have mr hippie kiddo buzzy wow that's quite a name uh he says that you are his favorite physical science teacher oh, you're gonna make me blush <laughs> <laughs> guys i'm sitting here too you know i can also be a favorite but anyway guys we're going <laughs> to take a small break and when we come back we're going to continue with the next question stay tuned Thank you. 